Welcome back to Life and Style. Remember, this is Inspiration Thursday. And we've got, we've just had an amazing time on Innovate. That was mind blowing. Thank you so much, Tendai, for that. Now, coming back, we have motivated today. We're taking to a guy who moved from politics to the construction industry. I'm talking about Moses Mwehia, who beat Uhuru Kenyatta way back at the Gatundo elections. He was a former member of Gatondo, member of parliament for Gatondo, and today we're here to talk about his life, starting from parliament, going all the way to the construction, and he focused on motivating people who are in the construction industry. Welcome to the show, Moses. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as introduced, my name is Moses Mwe here. Yes. I am a quantity surveyor by profession, mm -hmm. and um, people call us uh, cost engineers. Okay. Uh, because we are the one who look at uh, the procurement processes, ah. the, the construction costs. When you say quantity surveyor, you'd lost me at some point there, but thank you for redeeming the situation. Very well, very well. <laughs> now, uh, I joined politics, I think by chance. Mm -hmm. But I was a great supporter of politicians. Ah. Uh, so at one time, my friends, young friends, I was a young man, and my friends uh, pushed me into politics. And uh, finally, I got into politics and I, uh, I got Gatondo South seat. You, at the same time, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta was trying to run for the yes, same seat. Yes, uh, we were the two competitors. I was a bit polished then, I was more polished. Mm -hmm. uh, he, was a, he, was, he was a greenhorn then, mm -hmm. I was more polished. But uh, I never showed myself fully because I knew I was up against the wall. Ah. Uh, of course, you have to use your, uh, your, 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 your brain and mm -hmm. other um, tactics together. But uh, nevertheless, I got to parliament and uh, in, 20, in 2002, uh, the current president, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, mm -hmm. took over uh, Gatondo uh, seat. Yes. And um, I went out. I have no regrets. You, you did your time. I did my time. Mm -hmm. uh, we were there during the times of reform. The reforms you see around yeah. uh, were during uh, our time in parliament. Mm -hmm. And uh, Uhuru Bugai Kenyatta took over from uh, 22002. Mm -hmm. And I think he's doing a very great job. Right. I really support him. And uh, after leaving Gatondo, I mean the Gatondo poli uh, politics, I joined the uh, construction industry. How uh, so? Like, what is the, how did you just transit into that? Was it something you were, were, you, were you passionate about it? I'm very passionate about construction. Okay. Uh, let me tell you, when I went to high school, I made my own wooden box. Your own After wooden box? After standard eight in primary school, uh -huh. I made my wooden box, which took me four years into the secondary. Are you serious? So I, my background is uh, uh, construction. <laughs> Uh, I'm passionate about it, uh -huh. but then uh, having been, having practiced quantity, quantity surveying for a while, mm -hmm. I realized the uh, Kenyan contractors uh, have so many obstacles which, uh, which, makes the, which makes it difficult for them to grow. Mm. So when I left parliament, I was approached by F SMEs, small and medium enterprises in construction. Okay. Uh, they had... Uh, an organization called Kenya Federation of Master Builders, mm -hmm. and they thought I would give them a voice so that the government could mm. listen. The one so you're a chairman of right now. I am now the mm. chairman of Kenya Federation of Master Builders. Yeah. And by virtue of uh, being the chairman, I sit at the board of the National Construction Authority. Ah, all right. Uh, whereby, in fact, National Construction Authority was the baby of Kenya Federation of Master Builders. Mm -hmm. I did the raw bill and uh, uh, lobbied, uh, as I was in outside this parliament, mm -hmm. but I lobbied until uh, 20, in the year 2011, mm -hmm. uh, the former president uh, enacted the bill into law. Ah. So I naturally sit on that board. I'm on my last term. Mm -hmm. And what is really uh, required is the regulation of the industry. For mm -hmm. a long time, there was no regulation in this country. And um, everybody, every Tom, Dick, and Harry went into construction. Uh, the procurement processes were not in control. So everybody uh, would go into procurement and uh, dish out projects to people they wanted. Mm -hmm. 
and the industry itself just stayed in limbo. Yeah. For a long time, the, uh, you find so many buildings around, particularly in Nairobi's Eastlands, yeah. which were constructed without approved plans. And you've seen, we've seen the consequences of that. We've seen people die. It's terrible. And that's down. why we it's had... It's really, really sad. That's why we had to push for the uh, National Construction Authority mm. to regulate mm -hmm. and also uh, build capacity. Yeah. Build capacity in our local construction. Contractors. Yeah. And you know, something very important that we were talking about before we came on set, and it's the importance of education yes. for these people. Because one thing is for sure, actually, I think I thank God for us having you on this show today, because mm -hmm. most of the times we do not know what. Uh, construction the construction industry goes through Correct. and uh, what it, you require to be in it yeah. and to make sure that whatever you do is successful and be at it best thank you because uh, that is the gist of the matter yeah we have um, many contractors mm -hmm. we have thousands of young people uh, who are in construction mm -hmm. they simply because they did not go to university mm -hmm. they went to the to the building sites yeah. And were employed there as Mujengo people. Yeah, unapata ya kila siku. Yes, yes. Uh, daily. They, they live it from kibarua. hand to mouth. Mm. These are the people we want to motivate. Yes. Uh, to become skilled workers. Absolutely. Because yes. skilled workers in the construction industry mm -hmm. are in big demand. Mm -hmm. And if the government uh, supports the initiatives, we will be able to export our young people to go and work in foreign countries, because that's what's happening. Uh, at one time, Canada wanted to a lot of plumbers, welders, but we don't have skilled workers, so they could, we could not uh, export them. I think you need to break it down. When you talk about skilled workers, what exactly are we talking about? A because skilled worker is yeah. somebody who has gone through a training. Mm -hmm. um, for example, we have uh, the village polytechnics. Yes. We have the national polytechnics. Yeah. Those young people who go through that uh, training, yeah. they are trained to be hands-on so that they can now be able to carry out uh, quality work with safety, with speed. But what has happened? Most of those uh, technical schools were turned to universities. Yes. Uh, the universities churned engineers, architects, quant surveyors who are not hands-on. Mm. Hands we need the technicians. Yeah. Uh, with, with a bigger ratio to the professional, mm -hmm. so that they are, they are the doers, they are the fixers uh, in, in the industry. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about this industry, people think uh, or tend to narrow it to just building construction. It is the entire infrastructure, roads, water, uh, uh, buildings, plumbing works, electrical yeah. works. The, the opportunities are immense. Because this country can only grow to Vision 2030, can achieve 20, Vision 2030 when we have young people well, who are skilled. To try, that, that brings into the picture of the Chinese, you know, because that's, that's, that's what we're seeing on our roads. Mm. Like you mentioned, that's the people we're seeing in our waters. We'll be seeing them making houses here, making estates. So what happens now to a Kenyan who's got the skills? And uh, how can that change or how can we reverse that? Yeah, if you look at uh, what's going on, uh, like let's uh, say in the con road construction, yes. works, al almost all the contractors are foreign mm -hmm. and basically Chinese. Mm. And uh, Kenyans have come to take them as the uh, epitome of construction. But what has trans uh, transformed them is because of the support they have from their mother government. Mm -hmm. uh, the big road contractors you see here, are um, parasitos, they are government parasitos. Okay. So they are go the China government has an input. And okay. when they come on board, they have all the finances. Our young people coming from the university, or a new starter like you and me, mm -hmm. when you want to start the construction, the government does not give you money. The government requires you to go and borrow from the bank. When you borrow from the bank and you work for the government, and end of the month, you have not been paid. Yeah. Then the banks are on you, leading to our new starters, our young people who want to go into construction, mm -hmm. being um, referred to the, is what you call this uh, uh, CRB? 
yes. credit reference bureau. Yeah. They are blacklisted. So they can't and get money. Kenyans think, oh, our people can't work. No. The problem is the worker, the contractors in Kenya mm -hmm. are borrow money from the banks mm -hmm. to go and do government projects. It is not sustainable. The government must give money upfront or have a system like a credit guarantee okay. whereby the, the, uh, the, the startup is able to access funds. Yeah. And then, end of the day, the government must pay within time. There is a new pro procurement law, uh, 2015, public procurement and disposal of assets, 2015, which the government has put out of effort. It's a well-written document. Mm -hmm. But uh, implementation is... Uh, because I was going to ask you, what if they put it out there and did not... Because we've got so many policies that uh, have been uh, put and set for Kenyans to follow, but the implementation is what is the problem. That's why I want our government to, lo to, to listen to. Mm -hmm. Because that law is so good. Yeah. Uh, and the people you, you, you read in the papers, if everybody followed that document mm -hmm. to the letter, it tells you when you bring on board a woman contractor. It tells you when you bring a young uh, man on board, mm -hmm. how you should give them preference in certain uh, constructions, how you should support them in capacity building. All right. And this is what we are trying to do at Kenya Federation of Master Builders. Okay. Train the young women, uh, the women in construction, young men, uh, in terms of uh, site management, in terms of um, financial management, in terms of pricing for that, th that contract. That's key. Because That's really key. a woman who wants to go into construction and has yeah. never gone into a class where pricing is taught, how do you expect her to succeed? Absolutely. And w how would you say is the, you know, we've already broken boundaries where we say there's certain jobs for women, there's certain mm. jobs for men. Yeah. Right now, women are doing everything that was, uh, that was thought to be for the men. Mm. Uh, how's the rate of women joining the construction industry? Uh, they, they find a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has to be deliberate. The, 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 the government departments must be deliberate in ah. supporting the women. True. Must be deliberate in supporting startups and young people mm -hmm. uh, because the projects are there, 30%. But you don't want women to go and sweep on the road or bring flowers to, uh, to a studio. <laughs> yes. We want them to build a dam. Yep. And a dam is a, is a huge investment. So the government must come in with support so that they can access those machines mm. that dig the dams. Those cranes that uh, build 20 story, yeah. 40 story, mm -hmm. uh, but it can be deliberate. What the government has also done in our push in the National Construction Authority, the law requires that every foreign contractor can only do one project of a category NCA1, which is for buildings currently 500 million shillings and above, for civil works. 750,000 shillings and above, and they must show that they will sublet mm -hmm. or they will do a joint venture mm -hmm. with a local contractor. Yeah. So as they do the project together, mm -hmm. there will be transfer of technology. Absolutely. So by the time they go back to their country, yeah. we have women and men mm -hmm. to maintain and to proceed with uh, the construction industry. In Absolutely. Country. Now we've talked about uh, training. Yes. that the Kenya Federation of Master Builders does. Mm -hmm. Talked about uh, these policies and making sure that they are followed up uh, by government. Mm -hmm. Looking at, um, at a young man who's gone and gotten the skill, how does he or she gain from uh, the Kenya Federation of Master Builders? The Kenya Federation is a champion yes. of uh, lobby. Mm. We are the champions of the, uh, of the lobby group mm -hmm. so that government um, implements its own policies and one of the some of those policies is that they must have systems for training there are also those who have not uh, gone to any technical school uh, as i said in the beginning they went to construction they are now masons they are plumbers but they remain at that level yeah. 
because they don't have a paper. So in the competence-based curriculum, which Kenya Federation of Master Builders is uh, collaborating with uh, our other partners, we want to bring those people to do a test, a simple test, through the National Industrial uh, Training Authority, mm -hmm. they, so that they get a paper. And that paper will uh, allow that skilled worker to do a diploma. All right. After a diploma, you can do a higher national diploma. And from national higher diploma, the professorship is the ceiling. You know, this is, I think this is very, very good, what uh, the Kenya Federation of Master Builders is doing. And uh, like you said, there's so many people out there, there are people trying to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And uh, all they do is they've come out of college mm -hmm. or probably they've come out of high school. Right. They don't have money to go to further their studies. Mm -hmm. So they're told, Jenga, Hapa, Skumbili, Tatu, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you'll get money to further Correct. your education. So when they, when they hear of this opportunity right here as they're watching the show, mm -hmm. they'd like to know, how do I join and at what fee? Do I get this training for, and am I given ideas on what school to go to? Mm -hmm. How, what kind of help can they get right now as a young person who's watching this show? Okay. There are several efforts that are being uh, spearheaded by different uh, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Kenya Federation is only one. Yes. Because for us, we talk for the, the SME contractor, small and medium contractor. And that's where the woman comes on board. That's where the young man comes, or even the older people who, are, who want to start. Now. We collaborate with, uh, at, at KFMB, we have partners. The, we don't get enough support, but we have a partnership with the uh, Association of German Contractors mm -hmm. uh, in North Line Westphalia, they're called BGV, supported, mm -hmm. the, their program is supported by the government, the Federal Republic of Germany, okay. through an organization called CEQA. Mm -hmm. So they bring in experts and uh, we, we, we bring the people together. We go through theory uh, on the topics that we choose. There are, construction has very many topics, mm. so we can only choose a few at a time. Yeah. Kenya Federation of Master Builders does not have that big capacity okay. to train many people at a time. Okay. But there are other opportunities, because like um, the technical, the vocational yes. training, mm -hmm. is that we know the Kenya Vocational Training uh, Initiative, uh, the government is opening up technical, many technical schools and equipping them. But the government must not jump into the training for the sake of training. Yeah. We want quality. Absolutely. And again, the training must be guided by the industry needs. Because mm. we could now again produce so many plumbers yes. and there's no plumbing work. <laughs> we need yeah. the industry to guide us. So the mm. government must work with the industry. We work together, get uh, the, what is required by the industry, and then you, 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 you train. Okay. But again, fortunately, uh, by training many, they can go out of the country. We can okay. go to Somalia, mm -hmm. help them in rebuilding. Mm -hmm. uh, with an organized uh, system, we could go to Sudan. But mm -hmm. then those who have gone to Sudan have been left on their own. Uh -huh. They've gone there because Kenyans are hardworking. Mm. And once they train and they have the, the capacity, they go out but without the government system on ground in Sudan. Yeah. So that for a co collaboration. They go there, they actually give 40% of their investment to a Sudanese. Wow. But later on, when the Sudanese find this guy is making money, yes. he, they either throw the Kenyans away. And then they just take it And off. the Kenyans have no one to fall back yeah. to. So we want the government to come on board. Mm -hmm. uh, so that when we are sending uh, labor out, yeah. There is a system. Absolutely. There's a lot, there's a lot of uh, projects and uh, opportunities in uh, the Emirates. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of um, opportunities in, uh, in the United States yeah. and even in but Canada. Basically like all over because you know construction is something that is happening every day. Exactly. I don't know if this will help in solving this problem but I'm looking at a country like Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Uh, they have NYS where when you finish your high school you have to join NY NYS, you mm -hmm. get hands-on kind of... Correct. Uh, you know, uh, what is it called? A training. Hands-on training, yes. Yes. Mm. Do you think that's, th 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 that's something that we should do? You see, like uh, the, our local national, yeah. uh, national uh, NYS, NYS yes. which has now been um, uh, soiled. <laughs> oh, yes. It, is the, it was the best thing yeah. that the government 
uh, put in place. Mm -hmm. Because at NYS, there, there is the machinery. Yes. And actually, uh, um, National I mean, uh, the Kenya Federation of Master Builders was looking to work with the mm. NYS. Yeah. Because uh, we, the trained skilled workers, mm -hmm. they work for contractors. True. And, they, and the contractor would like to have a skilled person. So by collaboration, they should have, uh, we should have been able to collaborate so that they can go to NYS, mm. get those skills, mm -hmm. and then come back. They do internships with contractors. Yeah. At the end of the day, they are employed. They're employed. And uh, that's so a, that's a it does not matter, I think for now, mm -hmm. the, we should, it should not be lost. NYS must be supported. Because that, that's a wayward, something that happened by the side. Yeah. But the, the intention is great and is the way to go. Absolutely. Yeah. This conversation has to come to an end at some uh, point. Before it goes to an end, <laughs> yes. I would like to say yes. uh, and emphasize those who have been given responsibility by the government to look into the construction industry mm -hmm. must quickly bring on board a construction policy. Kenya has no construction policy and therefore everything just flows. Ah. The construction policy would say that we are establishing a construction guarantee fund uh -huh. so that everybody follows that line. We, you, you access those fin the finances. The government can pay later as long as the contractor does not stop working. But today, the contractor works for 30 days. Maybe he has borrowed. Days. He cannot continue. Yes. He's either thrown out. And we say Kenyans are not kept, uh, have no capacity. I know they have. The, this guarantee fund has worked very well. In uh, Sri Lanka, I was there in March mm -hmm. with a team from National Construction Authority. Okay. They started, they were given 55 million rupees to start a construction guarantee. Today, that guarantee fund has 8.4 billion rupees. Wow. And counting, because they don't give out money. Mm. They give out guarantees. Mm. But then, of course, the whoever is the client must pay in on time wow. so that the guarantees can continue. Yeah. And finally, you have seen these collapsing buildings? Yes. If you don't know how much, we are losing so much uh, to, the, to, the, to, to the economy. Most of these buildings you see, which are five floors and above, the clans will have spent not less than 35 million. So you watch 35 million. Crumble down. Crumble down. That is a loss to the economy. Yes, it is. So we must have regulation, yeah. and the government must support mm -hmm. the National Construction Authority okay. to be able to regulate Absolutely. the industry. Thank you so much, Moses. Okay. And this is a message to all the guys out there, and you think that uh, maybe you're stuck to doing Mujengo, uh, Ya Ichi, Nikando, Kando. There's an opportunity for you to get the skill for you to be able to do greater and bigger jobs out there. So all you need is whatever you've gotten training on, get the skill get the paper to it and there's so many job opportunities just like Moses has said but you need to do it the right way. Today right. we focused on construction industry, what are the benefits, what are some of the things that are out there that could benefit you as a construction, uh, who's a guy who's in construction, it could be plumbing, it could be building, it could be making our roads, building those houses, whatever it is that you're into. This conversation should keep going on on our social media platforms. That's KTN Life and Style on Facebook, KTN Life underscore Style on Twitter and Instagram. And how can people get in touch with you, Moses? We are on, uh, we have a website. Get to Kenya Federation of Master Builders website. You get all the information. You can apply to join us. You do it online. Uh, and then we'll get with you. We have a, a, a new publication Good. called Ujenzi. Yes. Uh, construction Journal. Mm -hmm. It is through that uh, magazine that we want to start the conversation Absolutely. with everybody. It will be a free uh, magazine. Yeah. So all those who like to get the magazine, get in touch with Kenya Federation of Master Builders. And uh, That's very we'll easy. become a member. Absolutely. Then let's grow together. Then let us keep focused mm -hmm. on the construction industry. <laughs> Quailly. So there you have it. The magazine is called the Gen Z. So I'm Jengo Wote Kwele Inde. You know there's something out there 
for you. So do not feel left out or think that your job is mediocre. No, 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 you would not be in this very beautiful building if it was not for a construction worker out there who did something good for us. Let's give you a short commercial break when we come back. We've got books and blogs and restaurants of the week later on with Catherine Monty. Don't go too far, we'll be right back. Your background has nothing to do with who you can become. Never use your not-so-good background as a yardstick, as a plumb line to your destiny. 